Hello and welcome to this presentation about how to calculate empirical formulae. Okay, now, as in previous presentations, I do expect you to come with um, some knowledge. Uh, you should be able to understand that a chemical compound has a defined ratio of atoms. You should be able to use atomic mass and a molecular mass to correctly calculate the number of moles of an atom or a substance. And you should be familiar with the idea of percentage composition. So what is empirical formula? Well, if we look at a molecule, let's take water for example, then the formula for water tells us the ratio of atoms within the molecule. So here I have two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. And if I had one mole of water, I would still have twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms. And in fact, in one mole of water, I would have two moles of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms. But the empirical formula is just the simplest representation in a whole number ratio of the atoms present in a compound. For example, the molecular formula of glucose is C6H12O6, but the empirical formula is CH2O. Now, we are going to need to know how to calculate empirical formula. And there are two ways of doing this. The first way is if you are given the individual masses of each of the element in a compound, and we will usually be able to work this out from some sort of experiment. And most questions that you're going to be asked will probably involve the description of an experiment with some values which you're going to need in your calculation. And the second way is from the percentage mass of each element in a compound which you would be given in a question. So let's do a few um, examples. So using method one then, so using the individual masses of each element in a compound, so a sample of copper oxide contains 1.27 grams of copper and 0.16 grams of oxygen. And we want to calculate the empirical formula. The easiest way of doing this is to tabulate it. So put it in a table. There's going to look something like this. And all I've done here is I've got a table where I've got my two atoms that are mentioned in the question. I'm then going to write down the masses that I've been given. So this just comes directly from the question. So I've got 1.27 grams of copper, I've got 0.16 grams of oxygen. What we can then do is divide each of these by their relative atomic mass. For copper that's 63.5 and oxygen it's 16. And what that tells us actually is the number of moles of each atom that we've been given in the question. Because we're looking at the ratio here, I want to divide each of them by the smallest number. In this case, the smallest number is the 0 0.010. So we divide both of them by that. And it comes out that the ratio of moles is actually a two to one. So I've got two coppers to one oxygen which means that my empirical formula must be Cu2O. Let's look at some other examples, and I want you to pause the video and work these out. Here are the answers for those. I hope you got those. If not, go back and try and uh, make sure that you've made the correct calculations in the table. Let's look at the second way of working this out using the percentage mass of each element in a compound. And you might have a question like this. Find the empirical formula of a compound containing 82.7% carbon and 17.3% hydrogen. Well, we're going to draw a table again. And again, we've got um, our carbon and hydrogen, which are in our table. 
we're going to write the percentages that were given in the question. And then we're going to assume just for a second that we've got 100 grams of this particular compound. We choose 100 grams just because it's convenient for maths, because we've already got percentages, because it means that in 100 grams, I have 82.7 grams of carbon and 17.3 grams of hydrogen. We're then going to do exactly the same as the other method. We're going to divide by the relative atomic mass of each of the atoms, and then we're going to, uh, which tells us the moles, we're then going to divide by the smallest number. In this case, it's the 6.89. That will tell us the ratio of the moles, which is 1 to 2.5. Now, the empirical formula has to be a whole number ratio. So I can't put a 2.5 in molecular formula. So the empirical formula here must be C2H5. Here are some uh, problems for you to work out. Please press pause on the video, work them out. And here are the answers. I hope you uh, got those. If not, go back, make sure that you got the correct uh, calculations in your table. Now, finally, one of the things you might get asked to do is to work out uh, the molecular formula from a given empirical formula. Now, let's say I've got this question, a molecule has a molecular, a relative molecular mass of 180 and an empirical formula of CH2O. What is the molecular formula of this compound? Well, let's write down what we've got. We've got the, we know that we've got the empirical formula and we can work out what the relative formula mass of that is. We can, we've been given the relative molecular mass of the whole molecule, which is 180. Now, the ratio of these is actually 6, because 180 divided by 30 equals 6, which means in the molecule, in the whole molecule, I have six lots of my empirical formula. So I need to multiply everything in my empirical formula by 6, which gives me the molecular formula for our compound as C6H12O6. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and welcome to the world of empirical formula. Bye.